Tim Cook famously said that Apple would never produce a 7-inch tablet because, and I quote, they're not good devices. Meanwhile, Steve Jobs said that 7-inch tablets are dead on arrival. And though it might seem as if they're splitting hairs, Apple kept true to its word and released a 7.9-inch iPad mini. Evidently, that 0.9 inches makes all the difference. Apple promises that the iPad mini isn't just a scaled-down version of the 10-inch iPad, but in fact is an entirely re-engineered device. But there's only one way to find out about that, and that's to give the iPad mini the iFixit treatment and tear it down. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and we are very excited to be coming to you from our brand new studio to bring you our iPad mini teardown review. We managed to be among the very first people on Earth to get our hands on the new iPad mini, which means that you are among the very first people on Earth to see what's inside it. Small enough to hold in one hand and a good deal lighter than the original iPad, the iPad mini comes in at 7.87 inches tall and 5.3 inches wide, shaving off almost 2 inches of the height and width of the original iPad. With a 23% decrease in thickness and a whopping 53% decrease in weight, this latest iPad is only a few ounces heavier than Amazon's new Kindle Paperwhite, which is pretty amazing. The screen itself is a 7.9 inch diagonal LED backlit screen with the same resolution as the iPad 2, 1024 by 768. Obviously not a retina display. Along with the resolution, the iPad mini also shares the same class of processor as the iPad 2, both shipping with a dual core A5. But specs are only part of what we're interested in here at iFixit. We also want to know how easy it's going to be to fix one of these minis when the battery inevitably dies or it lands jelly side down on the pavement. With that in mind, we got our disassembly tools in order and dug it to the teardown. Right off the bat, we had to bust out our eye opener because, surprise surprise, the iPad mini is held together with lots of adhesive. While design changes to the iPhone 5 allowed us to easily remove the display after removing just a couple of screws, the iPad mini, like its big brothers, requires you to pry through copious amounts of adhesive, which is never a good sign in terms of repairability. On the upside, Apple chose not to fuse the front glass to the display, which is a move they've made with most of their recent iOS devices. This is really great news, because if you break the glass on the iPad mini, you only have to swap out the glass rather than the entire display assembly, making the repair much less expensive. Once we found the hidden screws holding the display in place, we were able to get our first look at the internals of the iPad mini, but our first look was thwarted by the same type of metal plate that we've seen in recent teardowns like the 5th generation iPod Touch. With the giant obtrusive metal plate removed, we were finally able to get a look at the internals of the iPad mini, and it's surprisingly similar to previous generation iPads. A really big battery and a slim logic board, but the battery is interesting and a little bit confusing. The iPad mini has a 3.72 volt, 16.5 watt hour, 4400 milliamp hour battery. Until you look on the back where it is a 3.78 volt, 16.9 watt hour battery. Hmm, whichever it is, the capacity is lower than any previous generation iPad, so it'll be interesting to see if it lives up to the 10 hour battery life promised by Apple. Along with the iPad 4, the iPad mini is the first in the line to get the lightning connector, and we were very curious to get it out and have a look at it. Unfortunately, once we removed the screws holding it in place, we discovered that it was soldered to the logic board, which is super disappointing. Dock connector replacement is one of the most common repairs we see in iOS devices, so let's hope that this new connector is significantly sturdier than the original 30-pin version, because replacing it in the iPad mini requires an entire logic board replacement. Speaking of the logic board, removing it was another source of disappointment as it's glued in place. Getting this board out requires a good deal of heat and a lot of careful prying. With the board out, we got our first look at the chips that make up the brain of the iPad mini. Most obvious was the A5 processor, which has 512 megabytes of RAM, the same amount as the iPod Touch. Once we completely disassembled the iPad mini, we were able to assess it in terms of repairability. Here at iFixit, we're interested in knowing how repairable devices are, not just because we want to help the growing DIY repair community, but also because repair is essential in ensuring we're making the best use of raw materials possible, and that we're following a path of responsible consumption. So to that end, we score every device we tear down for repairability one being the least repairable and 10 being the easiest to repair. The iPad mini scored a two out of 10. And here's why. 
copious amounts of adhesive hold many components in place, including the front glass, logic board, battery, front camera, back camera, and ribbon cables, making repair extremely difficult. The lightning connector is soldered to the logic board, so don't bend its pins. Hidden screws mean you'll need to be very diligent when trying to remove internal components. That about wraps up our teardown review. If you want to see the complete teardown, including gorgeous high resolution images, make sure you head on over to ifixit.com. And if you want to stay up to date with all the latest teardowns and repair videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free. Follow us on Twitter at ifixit and like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.